This is the Tough Gaming B850 Plus Wi-Fi motherboard from ASUS. It's built around the AM5 socket and the more budget-friendly B850 chipset with support for AMD Ryzen 7000, 8000, and 9000 series CPUs. Let's quickly take a look at what comes in the box. The first thing we have here is the Wi-Fi antenna. I'm just gonna put the board aside for a sec so we can see what else is in here. This is a big sheet of ASUS Tough stickers. There's enough on here to turn your case into a giant billboard for ASUS if you want. This is a pretty basic quick start guide in case you need help getting set up. These are little rubber pads to add support to your M.2 drives and there's two of them in here. We have two SATA cables. One has a 90 degree connector and then the other one's just straight. And this is another M.2 rubber pad. I have no idea why this one comes in its own package because from what I can tell, it's identical to the other two. It's a bit weird. It's not like they couldn't fit one more of these in that other package. And here's the board. It's part of the Tough series, so it's supposed to be designed for durability, so you're not gonna see too much RGB gamer aesthetics. It's more of a traditional black color scheme with some silver and yellow accents here and there. For the longest time, I never really liked the Tough look, but it kind of grew on me over time, and now I really like it. If you're somebody that gets tired of looking at RGB all the time, then this style of board's a nice alternative, because it still has a nice bold look, even though it doesn't have any lighting effects. It's a fairly heavy board, it feels solid. I guess you can say it feels tough, which makes sense. When you handle it, you can tell all the metal covers and heat sinks are adding a lot of weight and stiffness to the whole thing. We have dual 8-pin CPU power connectors on here. Obviously, that's important to make sure your CPU is getting all the power it needs to reach its intended clock speeds and keep things stable at the same time. The power design's made up of 14 plus 2 plus 1 phases. The VRM hardware is sitting under a set of beefy heat sinks. It looks like a pretty serious cooling system that shouldn't have a problem keeping the power circuitry nice and cool. I haven't had any issues with cooler installation on the last few generations of ASUS boards that I've worked with, and this one looks just the same. There should be plenty of space around the socket to get your hands in there and get your cooler installed. This board has four DDR5 DIMM slots with a maximum capacity of 256 gigabytes of ECC and non-ECC unbuffered memory at speeds up to 8,000 mega transfers OC. Let's go ahead and check the memory compatibility list on the ASUS website to make sure you pick supported RAM modules that are going to work with this board. I always recommend doing a quick RAM check when you're doing a new system build. Compatibility issues suck and it only takes a minute to jump onto that list and make sure you're getting a compatible memory kit. Don't be lazy. This board has three M.2 slots. Two are sitting under this big heat shield along the bottom and one sits right above the main PCIe slot. They can all support up to 2280 type PCIe storage devices and slot number two can take up to 22110. As with a lot of platforms that don't have unlimited PCIe lanes, you're gonna wanna pay attention to your storage configuration. If you're using a Ryzen 9000 series CPU, M.2 slot number one supports PCIe 5.0 times four, and slot number two supports PCIe 4.0 times four, and they're both routed directly to the CPU. Slot number three supports PCIe 4.0 times four, but it runs through the B850 chipset instead of the CPU. And here's the really important part. M.2 slot number three and the bottom PCIe times 16 slot, that's labeled G4, they share bandwidth together. So when M.2 slot number three is active, PCIe times 16 G4 is disabled. So if you put your graphics card or anything else into that bottom slot and run a drive in M.2 slot number three at the same time, whatever's in that PCIe slot isn't gonna work. The good news is if you need more storage and don't wanna sacrifice your second PCIe slot to get it, there's also four SATA six gigabits per second ports. That's actually more than ASUS puts on some of their higher end X870 boards. So if you can work with the slower SATA interface and don't mind all the extra cables that come with that, then you can build up a decently high capacity storage system with this board. In total, there's four PCIe expansion slots. Slot number one supports PCIe 5.0 times 16 direct to the CPU, and slot number two supports PCIe 4.0 times 16 through the B850 chipset. That's the shared bandwidth one that we just talked about. So for maximum bandwidth with the latest PCIe 5.0 graphics cards, you're gonna wanna stick to that main slot right there. And we also have two PCIe times one slots here and here. This board has four internal USB headers, two USB 2.0 headers here. These can reach speeds up to 480 megabits per second, one five gigabits per second header over here. And this one's a 10 gigabits per second type C header for the front panel. And there's also a Thunderbolt USB 4 header right down here. You can use that to connect an add-on Thunderbolt IO card if you want. 
Audio components are in the bottom left corner. It's equipped with a Realtek ALC 1220p codec supporting 7.1 surround sound and up to 32-bit 192 kilohertz playback, but not both at the same time. Due to bandwidth limitations, 32-bit isn't supported in 7.1 mode. Even though this isn't considered a top tier board, it still has a good number of fan headers. There's seven of them in total on here. These three are for your AIO pump, CPU fan, and CPU optional. And then we have system or chassis fans, number one, two, three, and four. There's two three pin ARGB Gen 2 headers here, and one more down here along the bottom edge next to the fan headers. As long as you plug in compatible ARGB devices, you'll be able to use ASUS Aura Sync to configure and get everything all synced up. The back panel comes with a pre-installed IO shield, so you don't have to worry about installing that. And it comes equipped with DisplayPort, HDMI, three USB 10 gigabits per second type A ports, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, two USB 2.0 ports, one 20 gigabits per second USB type C port, four USB five gigabits per second type A ports, a Wi-Fi 7 module, audio jacks, and a BIOS flashback button. That's a total of 10 USB ports on the back panel, and if you're like me, you need all the USB ports you can get, the more the better. Overall, this B850 Plus Wi-Fi Tough Series motherboard from ASUS should be a good fit for mid-range gaming or productivity systems. It's got a decent amount of storage capacity, good cooling, and it gives you the option to add some ARGB accessories. I have the full list of specs and details for you down in the description along with some purchasing links. Make sure you check that stuff out if you're interested. Give the video a thumbs up, get subscribed on your way out, and we'll see you soon.